With the increasing use of atmospheric gases, there is a greater demand for liquid cylinders to meet the storage and supply requirements of a wide variety of applications. Liquid cylinders can be applied to a whole range of applications that cannot be served with high pressure cylinders, as well as providing operational advantages to many traditional high pressure cylinder applications. They provide the versatility of larger storage capacities, a wide range of pressures, and either gas or liquid withdrawal. This tape is intended for use by both the gas user and gas distributor. It will review the proper operating procedures for liquid cylinders and is divided into the following sections. Putting a liquid cylinder into service, handling liquid cylinders, and filling liquid cylinders. This portion of the tape will address how to put a liquid cylinder into operation. Liquid cylinder is a generic name for low pressure, portable gas storage containers. Liquid cylinders are rapidly replacing high pressure cylinders in many higher volume gas applications because of their greater storage capacity, ease of handling, and greater safety. Rather than storing gas in a gaseous high pressure state, liquid cylinders store gas in a liquid state and convert it to gas upon demand. A single liquid cylinder has the storage capacity of up to 20 high pressure cylinders and operates at less than one quarter the pressure. Stated simply, a liquid cylinder is a sophisticated thermos bottle that stores a gas in a cryogenic state at less than minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The liquefied gas is stored in the inner 304 stainless steel tank, which is supported inside a vacuum space and wrapped with a proprietary insulation. Minnesota Valley Engineering manufactures a full range of liquid cylinders with storage capacity from 80 to 240 liters and pressure ratings from 22 to 450 PSI. For the purpose of this tape, we will discuss the use of a Duracell model liquid cylinder because it is the most commonly used liquid cylinder and incorporates all the features of the various other models. It has a storage capacity of 165 liters and can supply product in either gaseous or liquid forms. Let's begin by becoming familiar with the unit's operating controls. The Duracell's operating controls are all located on the top of the tank, protected by a stainless steel ring. Of all the control features, the pressure gauge is probably the one you would look at first and refer to most frequently when operating the Duracell. The gauge indicates gas pressure inside the inner tank. When the Duracell is being used to dispense liquid, the operating pressure should normally be below 20 PSI. When the Duracell is being used to dispense gas, normal operating pressure ranges from 50 to 150 PSI. For most applications, the pressure inside the tank must be artificially maintained. The Duracell has a pressure building circuit to do just that, automatically. To activate this circuit, open the pressure building valve located at the top of the tank. What happens as you open that valve? The pressure building circuit takes liquid from a line that runs from the bottom of the inner tank and passes it through the pressure building coil attached to the inside wall of the outer tank. As liquid passes through the coil, it is vaporized by the heat of the outer tank and the resultant gas is fed through the pressure building valve and pressure building regulator into the inner tank, causing the pressure to rise. Because the pressure building vaporizer contains cold liquid, it cools the outer tank and it is perfectly normal for frost to form on the outside of the Duracell. The Duracell's pressure building regulator will control the normal operating pressure of the cylinder during gas use. It's usually set at 125 PSI and is adjustable from 75 to 175 PSI. Now that sufficient pressure has been built, we are ready to draw gas from the Duracell. To do this, open the gas use valve. When the gas use valve is opened, pressure in the tank forces liquid up a withdrawal line and then down into a vaporizer coil which is soldered to the inside wall of the outer tank. Once again, heat is conducted through the outer tank walls to the vaporizer. As the liquid moves through the coil, it is vaporized by this heat. 
The resulting warm gas flows up through the gas use valve out to the user's system. Generally, a single stage regulator is attached directly to the Duracell gas use valve to reduce the supply pressure to meet the user's requirements. Normally, the Duracell's pressure building regulator should be set at least 25 psi above the user's pressure requirements. The vaporizing capacity of the Duracell ranges from 300 to 400 standard cubic feet per hour on a continuous basis. A Duracell can provide two to three times this rate for short periods of time. However, a prolonged high draw will cause the gas withdrawal temperature to fall and the outside of the Duracell will be very heavily frosted. If a greater flow rate is required on a continuous basis, multiple Duracells can be manifolded together in parallel or liquid from a single Duracell can be fed to a freestanding vaporizer. With the pressure building valve turned on, a Duracell can feed approximately 8 liters per minute of liquid to the vaporizer. If you don't use the Duracell for several days, pressure will continue to rise at a rate of 30 psi per day because a small amount of heat will leak into the inner tank. This heat vaporizes a small amount of liquid and causes the pressure to slowly rise. In fact, it may build up to the pressure control valve design pressure. The valve will then open and vent gas to the atmosphere. The pressure control valve is mounted on the same stem as the pressure gauge and is set to open at 230 psi on a Duracell. In addition to the 230 psi pressure control valve, the inner tank has a rupture disc which bursts at 400 psi as a secondary relief device. There is also a burst disc on the outer tank which protects the space between the inner and outer tanks from high pressure. It has a plastic cover and a warranty disc that should never be tampered with. To minimize losses from venting, the Duracell has an economizer circuit which works automatically when the gas use valve is opened. The economizer circuit has a regulator that is set to open at 140 psi. When the pressure reaches 140 psi, the regulator allows gas from the top of the tank to flow through the internal vaporizer out of the gas use valve to the customer system. This reduces pressure in the inner tank and minimizes losses from venting. When pressure normalizes, the economizer regulator closes and the Duracell delivers gas by drawing liquid through the vaporizer circuit. The economizer regulator should have a set pressure 15 psi higher than the pressure building regulator. To withdraw liquid from the Duracell, first close the pressure building and gas use valves, then open the liquid use valve. Opening the liquid use valve allows head pressure in the tank head to force liquid up the withdrawal tube and out the liquid use valve. Liquid withdrawal should be done at low pressure to prevent flash losses during transfer. If pressure in the tank is higher than the normal liquid withdrawal pressure, open the vent valve to lower the pressure before withdrawing liquid. Liquid is typically withdrawn at less than 15 psi when filling an open container. If a greater liquid withdrawal pressure or rate is required when filling an open container, a qualified service agent can adjust the pressure building regulator to provide flows up to 10 liters per minute. In the center of the tank, there is a liquid contents gauge. This is a float type gauge and provides an approximate indication of the tank's contents. Finally, this cap covers the pinch off tube through which the tank's vacuum was pulled. In addition to these major components, the Duracell is equipped with standard fittings as specified in Compressed Gas Association pamphlet V1. That covers all major operator components. Once again, briefly, the pressure gauge indicates pressure inside the inner tank. Opening the pressure building valve increases tank pressure to normal operating levels. The gas use valve allows gas to flow from the tank. The economizer circuit minimizes product loss. To draw liquid, close the gas use and pressure building valves and open the liquid use valve.
You probably noticed the valve handles were different colors. Beginning in January 1988, all MVE liquid cylinders have color-coded valve handles to make operating easier. When withdrawing gas, open the two green handled valves which open the pressure building and gas use circuits. When withdrawing liquid, open the blue handled valve. To lower the tank pressure, open the silver handled vent valve. This concludes the operational portion of our tape.